Hello, it's me again. Uh, hang on a sec, let's just, I'll try and get the chat up to join. I'm doing this stuff anyway, so even if nobody joins, I'll just leave it streaming. Maybe someone will pick up uh, later. So, just bear with me. Oh, there we go, it's live. I'll just click that. So I'll give people a, a few minutes to join. Hello, hi Neffers. Uh, and hi, hi uh, Rafa. Uh, let me try and uh, I'll see what I'm doing there. Yeah, I've tried to add you as a moderator, Neffers. Uh, let me just go back to the uh, face cam. Yeah, so what I thought we'd do today, um, sorry I wasn't around yesterday, I just didn't feel well and I'll be not feeling very well today either. Um, just a bit off, uh, I'm not sure whether I'm starting with a cold or something, there is a lot of that sort of stuff going around as well as so you know what. Um, but what I thought we'd do is have a look at a package here from Tom, Tom Meads. I mentioned uh, the other day but I I don't know where it was, it was in the other room I think and I couldn't remember Tom's name, Tom Meads. Um, so he sent me a lot of stuff in the past. He sent those. Uh, put the camera down a bit. He sent those uh, vampire, um, what they're called, a vampire card, and I fixed a pin on that and some uh, relocator. That were actually, from Terrible Fire. I'll show you my mug here. Terrible Fire. There you go. Terrible Fire. Oh, hang on. I didn't stay on did it. Yeah, Terrible Fire. He had some of those Terrible Fire relocators, and I fixed the uh, pins on those. Uh, so I've got a parcel, as I say, from Tom Meads. I've just opened it. I've taken all the labels and stuff off just to protect uh, Tom's, uh, you know, address and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'll show you that. We'll have a look at that. I need to clear up the uh, mat here as well. Uh, you can see I haven't finished uh, cleaning uh, that thing yet. Um, yeah, I'm making some progress on it anyway. I'll uh, have another go at that later. Let's just uh, move this out of the way. Move these tools out of the way. The other thing I was doing uh, yesterday, uh, off camera, is just going through all my TTL chips. There's just a couple of uh, drawers here. And uh, doing a bit of an inventory, you know, just going through and uh, making a note of, well, I've done the SMD ones, I've got some of the SMD ones there. What different types I've got, because it's so easy, little space like I have, and I stick just various chips in various drawers here. It's easy to lose track of what you've got, whether you've got stock for a certain chip, how many you've got, etc. So, uh, just bear with me a sec, let me just find somewhere to stick all those uh, trays, because there's a few of them down here. Uh, I need to finish that later. So, I'll just move the camera over here. Uh, hi, I'll try and keep up with the uh, chat a bit better. Uh, hi, Cathers. Hi, Mahat. Uh, Mike Perman. Hi again, Mike. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, Smith and Jay, Chris, are you outside on the conservatory? <laughs> hi, yeah. I'm inside, you can hear cars and background noise so uh, yeah you might think I'm outside but I'm not uh, so yeah I've got this uh, cover letter here um, hi Chris here's the A500 and CD32 motherboard need some work the A500 board has some issues with the serial port I have to populate the board with the last few spare custom ships I have it's missing as you'll see in a minute some CIAs and uh, I think a Paula and a Gary um, but I can borrow those from one of the other boards if that's what we decide to look at here uh, I have source replacement 1488, 1489 serial comms ICs. I use sys with a badly wired up serial harness, which showed multiple lines not working. The expected voltages on the pins are present at the correct port pins. I suspect 1488, 1489 are both are bad. The CD32 just needs a recap, kit is included. Um, that's from a MEGA kit, I noticed. Uh, the board has a Rev3, so I expect the other caps will be on the wrong way. Uh, there are two A500 memory expansions included. One does not work at all, and the A501 does but it's a mess, as you can see. I wouldn't mind the A501 back repaired, but please keep the other one if you can fix it. Uh, two disk drivers included are yours. Uh, the PC drives that haven't been adapted correctly for the Amiga. The Amiga kit's uh, sourced drive has been messed up before I acquired it. It was in a pile of Amiga spares repairs from a friend. The external drive does not give the disk change signal correctly and probably never did, but now doesn't show up when connected to an Amiga. Let me know about any extra costs for parts, labour, as you've already done a lot of work. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you very much for entrusting me with this stuff. So, uh, just move that out of the way. You don't need that. So, uh, let's just have uh, some of this stuff here. I'll just uh, catch up with the chat. Let's just get this out of here. Uh, 
Bristol all all morning. Um, yeah, morning. That's where you are. It's, it's uh, mid afternoon here. Well, sort of early afternoon. One ish is it? Nearly two actually. Uh, hello from South Africa. Hello for joining all the way from South Africa. I'm from Sherbrooke, hello, Montreal, Quebec. Hello, Harold Bags. Uh, Matt, I miss my city 32. I still have Diggers Oscar City for it. I even remade a Diggers Windows Linux OS X uh, that I loved because I love the game so much. That's really cool. It's really good when people get inspired by something like that and remake a, a version for modern uh, uh, systems. So I'm not sure. I think you might have mentioned this. this uh, you can see that it's a bit baked, isn't it? Um, one of the caps there. And obviously you've got the, the typical corrosion you get on these uh, A50. Well, actually, I'm thinking, the A501, isn't this the uh, one meg one? Or is it? One, two, three, four. I'm trying to think. That's, uh, or is that half a meg? That might be half a meg. I'm imagining things. It's just a newer version, isn't it? Because you get the older version of this, it's got like, uh, I don't know, 16 of these. On the, not these, but 16 slightly smaller DRAM chips there. Uh, these ones are like four times the. Uh, we've got four, four bits instead of one, haven't they? That's right. Those are four bit ICs. Anyway, so that's that. Put that away. Uh, put it over there. So look at the, uh, the next thing here. Uh, got it, Tim. Hello. Nice to see you again, Tim. Hope you're okay. Um, this is at the start of the video. Feeling very well again. So I don't know. Might not go on too long today. We'll just see how I am. How I hold up. Um, so this looks like. I don't know, this looks like a, I'd say a ROM switcher or something, but I don't know. It's got some pins missing there again, look. So we could, uh, you know, that could be fixed with putting a new socket on it. Well, yeah, a new socket or some, just fix the pins individually. So what have we got here? A little bit of uh, 7 4 logic. Uh, three different ICs there. Sorry, I'm not very central, am I? Um, it says www.mediakit.com. Let me just get my uh, magnifier onto the job here just so I can see what on earth uh, it says on the board. Set jumper if 512k kick don't work. What? What on earth does that mean? Yeah, there's, there's nothing else on this. There's some hot glue on the underside there and a plastic uh, thing. But there's nothing to identify what it is. So, um, yeah, I'm guessing a ROM switcher maybe. But then why do you need... I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. What do you think that is? I mean, I guess you could go to the uh, Amiga Kit website and work out what that is. Uh, Dave Crunch, a dual kickstart board by the looks of it for an A500. Yeah, maybe it is. And then maybe this logic here is to sort of do a nice sort of soft switch on some of the things there. I mean, quite why you need three ICs for that. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I'm sure that's probably what that is. So let's put that away. We can uh, certainly fix that. Uh, no issues at all. Some of these things will obviously be a video. I don't know. I might even pick up later in the week or at the weekend some of these things and just do more streams. The one thing I am finding is, and it might be more frustrating for, for you guys if you want to watch uh, an edited, um, shortened down video, but for me, as, as it sounds, these are easier. Live streams are easier to do because uh, I feel like I, in some ways you can get more comment in. I still make mistakes just the same. Uh, that video the other day I was calling that. Uh, Danish Amiga 500 to Danish, Danish C64. So, uh, yeah, I still make the same mistakes. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, it's easier than editing and spending hours and hours and hours editing and rendering it and uploading it. But that doesn't I want to stop uh, doing uploads and things, uh, edited ones. I've got lots to go. So this, again, looks like, well, I'm guessing it looks like a ROM switcher or something. It's strange it's not got any pin in it. It's got a socket on one side there and then two sockets there. Very odd. I wonder if it had one of those uh, double-sided things to plug into that, you know, so that you could stick it in, and then you've got two ROM slots. But anyway, we'll put that on the side there as well. Oh, let's look at another ROM switcher. Let's uh, have a look over the other side. Martin Wilkinson Amiga Kick Kickstart Triple ROM Switcher A500 A2000. Thank you for that. Uh, Simon Zafara, afternoon, Chris. Afternoon. I don't release now a day. Uh, I think Millennium Software is owned by Sony now. Hello from Germany. I in St. Driven. Hope you're well. Yeah, hope you're all okay. Scroll down. Greetings from Poland. 
Death as plus you can interact with chat on the fly. Yeah, that's a good point, but I'm not very good at interacting. I mean, that's why I'm just periodically just glancing over there now just to try and uh, keep track. So that's just a RAM expansion look. It's got the same chips there as well as that other one we looked at before. You know, four bits, four bits in each of those. So that's just going to be a half meg. And uh, it's got a, a Noki real-time clock there. It's interesting how they used a, a number of different types of real-time clocks on the Amiga. You know, like on those 4,000 boards there, they've got like a, an R5... C P01 or something, I forget the exact part number, it's a Rico device. This one's an Oki. Uh, it's the M6428, is it? Or something like that. Um yeah, so uh, again we can look at that in a future video. I've got a load of these RAM expansions. I might wrap them all up into one giant let's repair a ton of uh, RAM expansions type video. Better put these out of the way now, put them back in the ESD bags. Conrad Larson, hi from New Zealand, hello. Thank you for joining. Andrew Clegg, hey Chris. Sorry if I missed anything here, by the way. Uh, Roland Smedberg, hello from Stockholm. Uh, we're usually just talking to each other sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's no worries, you know, try and do that. Um, I've made uh, Neffers, I think, a uh, moderator. Um, if I do miss anything, please just uh, keep uh, shouting at the yellow ch the yellow chat. You know, you can put at. Uh, I'll show you if I just do a test to come. Uh, if I can uh, type, spell me a sec. Yeah, you put the and at symbol, and then as you start to type, it will list the people who have the, the you know use the characters uh, typed there and their name as you start to type, and you'll be able to pick them from the list and then just type a message. So if I put test. Yeah, that'll go straight to Conrad and highlight it in yellow. So if you if I miss anything, um, yeah, my hat's just sent me one. Um, you can do that. Uh, we'll try and move a bit further over back over here again. Hang on. Just because it's a bit easier on the map there. I don't want to be uh, careful about not my uh, terrible fire tea over. That was good timing, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> terrible fire just appeared in the chat just as I said terrible fire tea. Hello, Stephen. Let's stick that there, right? So uh, the next thing here is uh, I'll pull you back a bit now because I'm going to end up knocking my tea over, aren't I? Um, floppy drive, I think. I don't even think I'm going to open this at this stage. We can have a look at this later. It's just a three and a half inch drive, and uh, I think um, Tom was saying some of these have been modified and failed to work with an Amiga. So that's that. Uh, this one looks like an external drive. I wondered what it was because it, it feels pretty weighty. Um, so, you know, you can see the cable out the back here, and um, yeah, I'm not going to open that just yet either, but it's, um, I think, just a, you know, no-name brand uh, external floppy drive for an Amiga, so again, that will be a uh, subsequent video. And then this little box here, we've got the main boards, and we've got some uh, ICs uh, here. Sean Connolly looks like a single, single malt. <laughs> no, it's not. It's... <laughs> it's uh, Calm tea made by Twinnings. Uh, it's the last tea bag actually. So he's included a couple of ICs here. I'm guessing this is the 1488 and 1489. I do have some of these, I think, if these turn out to be uh, no good. And yeah, serial dongle there where he's joined various wires together. Because what you can do with the serial port is create what's called a loopback connector. So that's what this is loopback, uh, you know, test harness. Um, so it's quite simple really like for example where is it there pins two and three here that's to receive and transmit uh you know connections you can just join them together that's your basic form of a loopback for testing serial so you know as it transmits out on one pin it receives it straight back on the receive pin so using terminal software or you know some diagnostic software you can write various things out and read it back and check if you're getting what you're writing out. Does that make sense? And that, in theory, would be testing both the receive uh, and transmit uh, ICs there. But, you know, there's lots of connections here. You've got with serial. There are, typically, you can get by with, um, you know, the receive and transmit for basic serial connections. But you could do more complex things with it. There's um, control signals there, like uh, CTS, clear to send, and... Uh, I don't know, there's a load, loads of different uh, signals there. So hence why you've got to join some more of them up. You know, you can see there there's like three or four joined together, and then again there, three or four joined together. And some voltages as well on the Amiga, because I think unlike the standard serial port, you've got like minus 12 and plus 12 or something like that coming out on a couple of pins here. 
We'll talk more about the serial stuff in a minute when we have a look at the board. I'll just catch up with the chat again. Uh, da, 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 da. Terrible fight, it's a damn nice size. <laughs> Morgan, just going to hello everybody. Oh, looks like single malt there. I love that mug. Yeah, I'm not surprised, Stephen, you designed it. <laughs> I love this mug as well, because it means I get giant amounts of tea all in one sitting. Uh, Nefers, does it keep drinks hot longer? <laughs> mm, it probably doesn't. Mm, I don't know. I think the um, it's going cold in here quick because it, the ambient temperature in this room is pretty cold, but the main thing is it holds a really large volume of uh, whatever. Uh, Morgan just games. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you, Jamie. I hope you're well. I, I watched your vlog thing the other day about you, uh, you know, coming into your house and going in the kitchen and packing your stuff. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. I hope you do more of those sort of uh, videos. It's always nice to see how everybody else is getting along and coping, even with just, uh, you know, the day to day stuff uh, like, uh, you know, food and, you know, managing the space in your house. Um, Zerk's new afternoon all. Matt, what's the difference between those longer serial ports and the new sm and the smaller com serial ports on PCs? Um, not a lot. Well, there is, obviously. You've got lots of signals on here. We can perhaps look at it in a minute if I look at the pinout. Serial ports uh, like this obviously got all the control signals that typically you used to use with things like modems and things like that. That's primarily where, I think, it could be wrong, where a lot of those uh, control signals were used. Um, the nine pin out they are now, there's two main ones that you need. And obviously the receive and transmit, pins two and three, you get those on the on the nine pin. You'll certainly have those and you'll have, you know, like say two or three or four of the main control signals that are perhaps used. But on something large like this, there might be more. And it may well be that lots, well, I was going to say lots of the pins aren't used. They certainly are on here, aren't they? We can have a look at the pin out of that. It's, um, yeah, as Dave Curran says, the 25 way has more signals. Most of which weren't used. The nine way just as a more common ones. Yeah, that's summed up quite nicely there, Dave. That's more or less what I was trying to get at. I think. Uh, Zarkos, nice to see you again, Zarkos. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, everyone is going nuts in my place. Yeah, everyone's going nuts everywhere. I think at the moment. Right, so let's just put that out of the way. I'll show you the boards. Um, let me move that mug. As far away from the boards as possible. In fact, as far away from a Mac as possible as well. I'll end up doing a water damage Mac repair next. So <clears throat> you can see this is a see this is a hundred board here. Let's, uh, let's just untake this. Hang on. Yep, yeah, you're welcome, Matt. No problems. Any questions as we're going along? Feel free to fire uh, questions. And if I don't know the answer, you've got lots of really clever people in the chat here: Stephen Leary and Dave Curran and uh, many other people um, that will be able to answer things I cannot answer or I fail to see being asked what's this here what on earth's that <laughs> you see that it's like something sticky stuck on here like an old unused plaster or I don't know don't like that <laughs> I'm getting rid of that that's, that's going over there that's going into the quarantine zone hang on it's sticky yeah it's very sticky let me just put this onto the mat here move the camera up a little bit so you can have a quick glance over that. So uh, yeah, on first inspection, we can see it's is it a six A board that? Oh, yeah, it's a six A board. Uh, the reason I jumped to that conclusion straight away was I was looking at these here. We've got spaces here for additional RAM. Uh, so we've got an eight three seven two A on there. We've got our CPU. We've got a uh, Denise. We're just lacking, as I said, Paula, uh, ROM, Gary, two CIAs. Uh, so these are the two chips that Tom thinks are the issue. And he did talk to me about this before, a few uh, month or two back. And I said at the time, yeah, I, uh, you've got a serial problem. It's probably one of the, either the AAs, swap those to start, I would test that. Uh, but it's, it's more likely to be the 1488 uh, or 1489. So uh, let me just carry, to catch up again. Terrible Fire, Lifeweight's just delivered my wine for the next month. There we go, Stephen, you sorted out. <laughs> you sorted out for the lockdown now. Uh, Zets Kim, yes, Gadgets Live, uh, hi Room, hi Chris, hi, hi Kim, yeah, nice to see you. Uh, da, da, da. Hey guys, Gadget, how are you dude? Good afternoon, good afternoon to you. Uh, I'm okay, but just feel a little under the weather, but I'm alright. Um, it takes a lot to make me go down completely where I can't do anything. I, really, I don't feel very well today, but you know, it's one of the things I'm always like that. People say to me, how are you today? I'm like, oh, I don't feel very well actually. It's a common thing. is isn't me just being a, you know, moaning about things, I generally generally from day to day don't feel well but I do feel like I've been starting the cold for last week anyway it, like I say it takes a lot for me to just become unable to do something if I wasn't filming this today I'd still be in here doing this no matter what um, 
Can you populate those empty RAM spaces? Yes, you can. I covered it in one of my previous videos, um, just from last week, actually, I think it was, I did a Rev6. Um, revisit of the 500, was it part 5? Uh, sorry, part 7. Part 7 of the A500 series there. Just It was the week, the week before last, I think, I covered it. I wouldn't do it though because as I sort of talked about if you stick um, if you stick these chips on here even with an 8372A which gives you one meg of chip this then becomes defunct you can't use this slot um, you need to add some additional address decoding and I think the answer lies in the chips here or lack of you see we've just got that one chip there let me just show you another board in a sec um, and I could be wrong please you know like I say feel free to correct me um, I'm trying to find another board as an example here. Now, I mean, this this might be this might be an example. I'm not sure. This one's a, a Rev Five board. Uh, you can see we've got uh, we've got two chips here. We've, hang on, we've got two chips there. That's the same. That's not a good example either. Um, I think on a 500 plus, you've got more down there. Anyway, trust me. I think that the issue. You need some additional uh, address decoding. You'd have to add a, some 7.4 series chips on there. Anyway, if we just uh, flip this around and uh, just have a look over here, I'll try and not knock in the phone. So you can see uh, an MC1488 and an MC1489. So these, back in the day, we, I used to swap a lot of these. These were very common, but not necessarily always on Amiga boards, but on lots of uh, PC, um, you know, old XT PCs and things. It was very common for these. Um, line drivers, they're called line driver ICs, to fail. And you have one that's a transmitter and one that's a receiver. And the first question you might have, you know, because I did when I was back in the days, why would you, what's the line driver? You know, what makes that any different than any other kind of buffer chip or something? Um, and it's all about the serial port. You know, you're using the serial as a, an expansion, you know, a, a, an interface, aren't you, to something else. So you might have a device that's sat maybe two meters away, plugged in via a cable, into your serial port and you want you know obviously digital data to go across that to whatever the device is either you know a, I don't know it could be a scanner or a modem or something even if they're just under the computer um, and when you've got voltages going across cable across you know distance you know maybe a few meters you get voltage loss you know you get suffer from a, you know attenuation problems where so you know your your, your, t your ttl level might be up here well actually it could drop a bit on a, a cable of a certain length and you get noise and all the rest of it so one of the clever things and what, why they created a line driver it um converts the you know the digital signals into um current changes so instead of having voltage You've kind of got stretch, you know, you've got current pulses. You know, you, you still probably can see a voltage there, but you, you get uh, changes in current. And current is better at, uh, you know, being transmitted over distance and, you know, perhaps more resilient. And I'm, I'm not, I'm talking from what I know here, I'm not an expert, but my understanding is uh, current is, uh, you know, less susceptible to noise and stuff, whereas, you know, the voltage, your voltage levels can, you know, can, let's say, you can get some attenuation and they drop. Um, so yeah, one part, one's the transmitter, you know, one, we're talking about pins two and three, primarily one of the connections on there is going to go to pin two, one of them is going to go to pin three, and then ultimately the data, you know, that uh, in terms of connectivity to the system, it's going to be read through one of the ports on one of the CIAs here, you know, um, I, I don't, can't remember exactly off the top of my head which one does which, it's really weird, I mean, I've talked about this before, and like the floppy drive, some of the floppy drive signals go through one, and then some of the uh, some of these go through the other i think um the there's no you know you can think you need to swap one chip but you might end up having to switch, swap the other one this is the point i'm trying to make you know, the schematics really you can't just guess um so just the chat again here just bear with you guys um, yeah i hope you feel better thank you very much Terrible fire, thank you. TF534 is a fantastic board. Yep, it is, it's wonderful. I love my 534. Uh, okay, just coming down a little bit. Happy Friday from across the pond. Happy Friday to you, Brian. Thank you very much. Uh, I really want one of those MVSAS converts from Vertitech. I still find it's insane how Magician Lords used to be $50 and now it's like 150 Yeah, it's supply and demand, isn't it? As the you know more people want these things, they're becoming you know less in volume, the ones available, and the prices ultimately just go up. Um, Stuart Kinnear, there's some kind of uh, GAMI mods you need to give A500 more than one mode. 
Yeah, that's correct. Um, a, D, Z, 93, don't cross pins, it will cause electrons inside the chip to stop normal function. Uh, yeah, that's true, actually, with serial ports. You know, one of the things that kills these here is actually the serial cable. You know, someone's plugged in the wrong kind of cable. Um, because the PC, it's like I say, I, I might have vaguely touched on it, well, I know I have. The PC serial port doesn't have that minus 12 and plus 12, I think. There might be another difference there. So you can, I've seen people kill them by sticking the wrong kind of things in there. Um, I've also, going to the back of the train, you can get a, 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 a converters, can't you? Agenda, they call it agenda uh, bender. And it's a little adapter that changes the gender. So you've got pins here, and I've got tons of them actually, if anybody needs any. And you plug it in, and then you end up getting socket pins on the other side instead. And I've seen, I had we had one of these come in where someone had stuck one of those in here, and then proceeded to plug in a parallel printer into it, even though they had a parallel port over there. That's the sort of thing that people do. And... Uh, Kill the ports. Um, the, the the nine pin ones are more common, by the way. It's it's rarer to find a gender changer for that. But you can get the uh, yeah the ones like that nine pin. Those are very common. I've got tons and tons and tons of them. I've got enough to uh, I don't know I don't know what I would ever do with them. I've got more than I can ever use. So if yeah if anybody needs one of those, let me know. The cost of postage, I'll put it in the post for nothing. Uh, okay. So let's. Uh, Start move on to the other board, I think. So the question is, up to you guys, would you prefer to look at the serial problems with this one? I mean, ultimately, I'm just going to start by, maybe we'll try and we'll test it. We'll use that little uh, cable he's got, boot up, sys test, see what it's reporting, then come back to the mat, remove these two chips, socket them up, put some new ones on, and see if that solves it, perhaps. Um, I mean, we can measure a few things as well, but... And, you know, it's one of those, it's, in terms of expediency, it's easier just to test it. If it fails, well, assume it's these, take them off, put some new ones on, test it. Uh, you could, you know, you could start probing the individual pins. We could look at the transmit signal and see, is there anything coming out of it? Is it pulsing or is it dead or is it stuck? But I don't see any benefit to that. If you know you've got a problem with your seal port, it is just easy just to go, let's pull them off and put some new ones on. Uh, the other alternative, let me just uh, put that over there, is... Uh, CD32, motherboard here again from Tom. Uh, let me try and open this, hang on. Let me just cut the tape, it's probably the easiest thing to do. Hello, hello. We've still got people joining there. Uh, hello, Atsabura Basar. Uh, do you sell any other stuff that you repair? Uh, yes. Uh, often, though, it's just to stick it on eBay. Um, it goes pretty quick. And, you know, I haven't really voiced my eBay shop or anything like that because I haven't really got one. It's just when I want to get rid of something, I'll just stick it on eBay. And there's reasons for that because I just don't want people fake bidding and stuff and people, you know, causing deliberate issues. There's never any problems with anything I ever sell. And um, if there is a problem, I'll pay for the return postage and I'll solve it and send it back, as I've done in a few instances. Um, hopefully, those are far, you know, thankfully, those are far and few between. I did have the unfortunate event that happened a while back as well, where I had a, a, a pristine C64. I think I covered it on one of my videos on my channel. And it was, it was, it still had the original warranty seals and everything. I didn't open it, I left it as it was because it was perfect. It was an absolutely perfect machine. Um, there was not a mark on it anyway, it looked like a brand new machine. And uh, yeah, the courier damaged it. It got smashed to pieces. I was gutted, uh, and it was really well packaged. So anyway, the insurance sorted that out, but that was uh, you know that kind of put me off. So a lot of the time, I try and avoid selling things actually on eBay, I'll, and most of the time, I'll stick things in my collection. Um, so I've just seen if I've missed anything here. Dave Curran, oh, nasty power ports have lots of grounds on the bottom. That's not going to do me see up any good. Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing. Um, so I can just, Christopher, how have you recently sold BBC A3000 who repaired? Um, yes, that's right, I did, and a 3000. Uh, sorry, that's reminding me, Zarkos, I've got that money. I'll sort it out today. I promise you I'll sort it out today. I meant to do it the other day, but just with various things, doing these streams and not feeling well, I just haven't had a minute. Um, but my wife reminded me, actually, fully enough this morning that I need to, to do that, so I'll do that today. Um, I am looking for NTSC Atari 800XL parts. Yeah, they can be, some of the Atari parts can be hard to find, but having said that, on, uh, well, yeah, it's the NTSC ones that's the issue. I was going to say, for PAL, 
you'll find you'll find lots on eBay. So yeah, this needs a recap. So I mean, let's have a look at this now. Let's have a close up. That don't look bad, does it? Yeah, we've got some, you know some dullness and darkness and things up here, but it's just dirt. The caps caps look okay. So that is not um, you know a, a big problem with it. These aren't even domed here. Look. Which is surprising because those are usually the wrong way around. Um, so, what would you prefer? Would you prefer we looked at the serial issue, or would you prefer we recapped the CD32? Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, I mean, recapping the CD32 might be a bit boring. Terrible fight! Is that motherboard for sale? The CD32. Um, it, I don't not it's terrible it's Tom's it's Tom Tom Mead's as CD32 so you would need to uh, and I can ask if you want if there's any specific reason you want this one Stephen is it a specific revision it, it looks different actually just looking at that that looks different maybe that's why you're uh, interested no it's not it's a Rev3 it's just a Rev3 um, yeah I can check with Tom Mead's he may be wanting to sell it um, the only one I've got is the the main one that I you know I've shown on my channel, which uh, you know obviously use myself. But this one is Tom's. I'll, I'll find out from Tom if he wants to uh, pass on. You know if he wants to pass it over. It says what's a Kiko say Rev uh, A or Rev Zero? Let's uh, hang on. Let's just flip this around and uh, have a look at Akiko. Rev A. It's Rev A. I'm just having a drink. Yeah, so Peter Ellis fixed the serial recap is boring. Uh, Neil Marshall, serial issue for me, please. Charles Donald, serial. Uh, yeah, I think I thought you'd go for serial. I, I feel like going for serial as well because I think the... As, as much as I think this would be easy to recap, because all I was going to do is, you know, Captain tape off the things I need, you know, so get a bit of Captain tape and the plastic things here. And I could just fly around with a hot air, you know, 15, 20 minutes and get them all off. And then, I don't know, an hour to get them all back on there because they're quite a lot. Maybe not an hour, maybe 30 minutes. But anyway, that'd be a bit boring, I think. So, um, and I, I'm going to have, um, it's going to be easier just to edit that, isn't it? It's going to be easier just to fast forward through all the, the same stuff and then you don't have to endure it. So, we'll have a look at the uh, serial on this uh, A500 then. So, the first thing we'll need to do is just populate the uh, missing chips here. So, uh, let me just get something to remove chips with. Where's that little pointy tool gone? Hang on a sec. <laughs> right, uh, sorry, I was reading comments there. Right, so let me bring a board in. We'll use this one. Just as a, a donor for some uh, chips here. Um, and uh, I need my... Where's it gone now? I can't see it for the life of me. It's not under this board, is it? No. Well, that'll do. I just need to get a screwdriver here. Let's uh, just carefully get these CIAs out. So I've got an extractor here, but you know what? It's, it, it'll, I was going to say, it. I'll struggle with it. That cap is just right in the way. There, where I don't want it. That's one. I'm better off with. Uh, yeah, I was going to say a normal screwdriver here, on that thin thing. Sometimes the difficulty you can have is just getting under, there you go, getting under there to get that out. So we need these two as well, don't we? And we need a ROM, so let's uh, get that one out. Let's Gary out. Paula out. I've not used this screwdriver in years. One of the first tools I got when I was in the trade that was given to me by one of the guys that uh, trained me, actually. That's in there, really stiff. 
Is that 1.3 or 1.2? Let's. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. I think this one might be a 1.2. I've got the suspicion. Let's have a look. I've got some red ink written on it there. It says 1.3, I think. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, that's that. So I'll uh, put that board out of the way. That was uh, a video you've not seen yet, that board. Uh, down there. So we'll get the ROM in first. I've had a look at the pins here. They look okay. They're a little bit oxidised. It's the sort of thing, you know, I'll clean it up before it goes back. Um, so let's see what we've got here. 8364R7. That's polar, I think, isn't it? <laughs> Hang on, before I guess, yeah, it's 57719 is Gary. So, uh, yeah, let's pull them in. Gary in. Just catch up the chat. Which ROM? Yeah, I think it's 1.2. Hang on, scrolling down here, I'm missing things. Mark your ROMs. Yeah, I, I did. Sometimes I stick proper labels on them, but just one or two I've just written in red uh, ink there. Woohoo for the waffle uh, and Amiga. <laughs> so let's get these CIAs in. You only have to look at these wrong. Should really be wearing a serious strap, but I'll be all right. You only have to look at these wrong on the uh, the break CIAs. Huh? Yeah, there we go. So they're all the right way around. They're all connected. Um, so we'll go and plug this in, I think, and uh, just see if it's working normally uh, in any shape of uh, you know or any any. Oh, there's one of those things there, look again. Or is that the one? I don't know, I'm losing track now. I got rid of that before, that sticky thing, and then another sticky thing's appeared here. Where's that one? Gone there, there's two of those. Anyway, um, let's have a look at the board here. So, yeah, some soldering and stuff has been going on there, look, all along here. I think the ports have been replaced, if you ask me. There. Maybe they were really corroded on this. You never know, it could be, uh, it might, it might be barking up the wrong tree thinking we've got a problem here. If those have had to be swapped out, maybe there's a trace or something damaged, but I don't know, maybe they've just been resoldered. That could be factory actually, thinking about it. Yeah, I think that's probably factory because the you often find the bottom end of these here just fluxed up, you know, lots and lots of flux all over them. Um, there might be the odd pin that's been soldered, but anyway, that looks all right. So uh, the thing we've got to bear in mind as well is it we don't know whether the other chips that are already on here are right. Uh, let's just check that's got the right marking for pin one. Yeah, that's. Um, but yeah, I think Tom might have tested those himself. He may know that those work. So let's uh, let's wheel over there and I'll just unplug the power for the phone. Hang on, I have to carry it and uh, let's go and test it. Oh, in a minute, we've got a an issue here because we've got. This to remove. Oh, one take me a minute. Let's just disconnect it. I had a good play on this uh, yesterday for a number of hours. No issues at all. I think someone, uh, people pointed out in that last start of the stream, with regards to the occasional black screen when you attempt to start certain games from uh, WHD load and the, the intermittent nature of that, they were suggesting to turn off the, uh, you know, to switch the no auto vec thing, uh, you know, tool tip on, and that should. Uh, solve that so I'll have a go at that at some point but yeah both those A4000 boards we looked at in the previous videos okay so I'll switch the TV on yeah I'll see my slippers so uh, we'll connect up audio connect up video and the video is going to be a tight reach here I now need to plug in that power supply actually What I will do when I got time is connect up, um, you know, alter my, uh, you know, modify this power supply here to have uh, something for the A500 um, because I've got some of the uh, connectors there. I think they came from uh, Hey Bert actually. Uh, he's, he was kind enough to send me a couple of those. Right, let's just bring the power around. Uh, let's just make sure. Everything kind of looks normal. I always sort of a bit apprehensive. I always look over a board like this before I connect the power up, as well as inspecting it, just to make sure there's nothing silly, like a chip round the wrong way, etc. Just get the power and I'll point you at the screen. Hold on. Have a 
can. Oh, hang on. No, don't want to lose the stream. Uh, let's, let's switch the power on. Let's get on I found the switch. And let's see what happens. Well, that's a good sign. I'm thinking it might be 1.3, but it could be 1.2. There we go, 1.3. That's good, okay. Uh, so I'll just connect the uh, floppy drive up if I can find it. Uh, I might as well just point you back down here again while I'm doing that. The other thing we need is uh, the power as well, don't we? So switch the power supply off, which it's off. Um, connect the uh, power thing up. It's going to be interesting trying to balance this. I've got to, I've got, and where's it gone there? The little thing I used to just isolate these, it came with uh, a load of those, uh, what are they called? Xilinx chips. It's uh, fine for something like this, it's a little bit of scaffolding. It just allows me to connect something up, sit it on the board and isolate it. But it's uh, safe to use. If it's safe enough for Xilinx chips to be shipped in, I'm sure it's safe enough uh, to just sit like that. So we've got sys testing. Um, I'll point you at the screen, let's just switch it on first. And then it'll be booted by the time I get the camera over there, hopefully. So there we go, that's booted. I'll just connect a mouse up. I can't see the blooming ports now. Is that the right port or the wrong port? I'm not sure. No, it's not that port, it's the other port. I think. Oh yeah, there we go. So, uh, okay. Let's just test the CIAs on here first before I do anything. I'm going to bring the laptop over in a sec so I can see messages and we'll connect up that little dongle. Timers. Yeah, we've done the timers. Peripheral ports. This is where you need, I think, that cable. Yeah, let me... Hang on, serial parallel. There we go. Loop back. Serial test requires dongle. Uh, okay, and you've got the dongle build guide as well there, so we can use that if, just to check in a minute. I'm pretty sure I had a quick look and it looks okay, I think. So that, that cable as Thomas provided it should be okay. So let me just get on the back, hang on. Okay, I'm back and I have the Mac. So, uh, yeah, the first thing I'm going to do, uh, it's easy to just point this up here rather than show you on the floor, is just separate these, just make sure none of these can short onto each other. Because we've got, as I explained earlier on, we've got a number of pins joined together, we've got two and three joined together there. Oh, thank you for that donation, I just saw that pop up there while I was uh, uh, looking at the screen on the phone there. Uh, much appreciated, thank you very, very much. Um, yeah, so you've got a number of pins joined together so that it can, you know, one of the pins can be read, its value can be read, and the other one can be written. At the same, you know, well, write to one of them first and then read back the value that's on the other. So that's why you join a load of pins up. So I'll switch it off, plug that in. Um, yeah, I've got to make sure I get the right port here. I think there's only one that will fit into. Yeah, there is. Again, making sure all those wires are all isolated from each other, and they are. Um, switch it on and we'll just run that test. I mean, we, we kind of know what the result is going to be here, don't we? We know that it's going to say there's something wrong. The question is what? Uh, is it those 1488, 1489s? Uh, serial parallel, loop test. So let's leave that. So red is bad, green is good. Well, it's looking bad so far, isn't it? Certainly pins two and three are out. And we know, I know for a fact, two and three are joined. That's right. 
I will inspect it closely with the magnifier in a minute just to make sure he has got pins to it. You know, he's looked at the socket the right way around. Typically on the socket will be printed some numbers, at least a pin pin one designation, so you can work it out. Because it can get, when you've never done it before, it can get confusing when you're looking at the uh, both the sockets and the plugs. Um, because you could be looking at something thinking, is this really pin two and three? Or is pin two and three on the other side? Because I am looking at the male connector rather than the female connector. It can get really confusing, but you'll tend to find that the numbers on them that are printed on the actual thing. You can, you know, if you look at it in the light with magnification, you can see numbers. And those numbers correctly reflect the exact pin numbers. It doesn't matter which one you're looking at, the male part or the female part. Um, so thankfully somebody's thought about that when they've designed it as a standard, you know, those connectors. Uh, okay, so just scrolling down a little bit. Hey Bert, yep, so he's here. Hi, hi Bert. Yeah, I'm just mentioning I've got one of those uh, connectors that you provided for an Ace 500 power supply. Anyway, that's not, it's not going to end that, is it? It's, I think it's it maybe the ones that are red, it's because it's still looking at them and it could probably just go on forever and a day with that now. So there is an issue. So I think the next thing we'll do, we'll just sock it up those chips. Um, because I have no reason to suspect, uh, well we can have a look at the magnification, but I've got no reason to suspect any other damage uh, has occurred there. Oh, one of the donations there from Zarkos as well, just spotted that I missed. Thanks Zarkos. Uh, sorry, not cheap. Right, so let's, uh, let's wheel back over there, I think, and get those chips off the board. So uh, I'll put you back down here a sec. We'll just disconnect all the stuff. Sorry, yeah, it is, but how are you doing? This? And Dave Jones speak, you know, this wobbling around all over, and it's a bit, uh, you know, there's nothing professional about this. It's just vlogish. Disconnect with that. Disconnect the floppy drive. That over there because we're going to need that again in a minute anyway aren't we? and uh, grab the ball so I'll take you over first and then I'll bring the Mac in so this is one of the problems with my space though as well like, you know I have a lot of this to and fro people who've got a proper workbench set up with uh, a display nearby and stuff and the power supplies and all the rest of it it's very easy to test and work on things and stuff bench I haven't, oh, I haven't got that privilege Right. Out of the way. Out of the way. So uh, something I'm just going to do is just count the pins on these actually. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so I need 14 pin sockets. I've got some of those, I think, to hand here. Um, so that should be straightforward. Let's switch the solder iron on. I'm going to uh, try and just use uh, the solder pump to start with here. The, the solder station, yeah, you know, is probably the best thing to use, but um, for small things like this, it's, I'll just use this. It's quieter and stuff as well. And I just find it far, far easier, I think. So, uh, just inspecting, just having a quick look here at this area just to make sure we've uh, not got, uh, I don't know, like a burnt trace. The thing is, you saw how many connections were there, it wasn't just one. So I think it stands to reason it's um, it's going to be those one of those chips. The other thing we could run there, and I forgot to uh, do that while we're at it, is just feel the tops of them. You know, you may find that when you're doing a test like that, one of them is getting super, super, super hot or something like that. Um, anyway, let's just flip that over. So it's, uh, it's these two here. You could do what I've seen other people do. I think Jan Beta, when he does these, he sticks a little dot on the board there with a, a marker or some, something so that he knows exactly which chips he's dealing with. But they're only two small things here anyway. There's no like resistor arrays or anything of a similar size there. So. Yeah, we're not too worried about that. DJ Legion, hi. Hi, nice to see you again, Lee. Hope you're okay. 
I fixed the C64 I was working on, replaced U19 and also the SID. What was U19? Uh, I forget. Did you end up just swapping the VRAM? Or the SRAM, you know, the colour RAM? Happy coding, love your work, Mr. Gadget. Hope you're doing all right. Thank you very much, much appreciated. I hope everybody's uh, doing okay, and I hope everyone's uh, you know staying isolated where they can. Right, let's bring the solder over. Now, I have no idea how easy this is going to be. I always get a little apprehensive when it comes to A500 uh, dip chips. Sometimes they come off super easy. Sometimes, certainly the RAM, the RAM's a pain over there. Uh, I'll show you why in a minute. You can see all the massive ground areas and things underneath it. Um, I'll start by just adding a crazy amount of solder and flux to each of these. And I might end up having to go higher on the uh, temperature. It's at 400 at the moment, which is a little bit high. But we might need to go higher for certain connections. Let's just see. Let's just see what happens. Uh, move the camera a little bit here. Hope it doesn't fall over again. Yeah, so heat it long enough so that you can on, wobble the pin. It suddenly stopped working, my pump one. Now it's firing on its own. Just what I need. Yeah, see, like the solder. It's not coming out of there. If it turns out it's going to be easy to get the desolder station on, I might just do that. Oh, what is going on with this thing now? It's like it fires when you don't want it to, and then when you... Let's try the pin next to it. When you try to fire it, it's not firing. Yeah, there you go, that one's all right. Yeah, there's a load of solder in there. Can you see that's just jammed? What? What is going on with that now? Let's just unscrew it. I mean, this was, funnily enough, this was actually cleaned out the other day, you know, after we did that uh, thing the other day. But clearly there's, uh, I don't know, something in here. Let's just clean that spring a little bit. Ugh, getting stuff all over my hands here. Right, I'll we'll clean the uh, a bit of that. Yeah, I've got a number of these. Um, I've got some much more uh, less used ones, you know. I might have to swap over to one of those, let's see. It's sticking down again. Oh, best laid plans. I can't believe I got stuck with the bumming. A solder pump that's now not working. Let's just clean the inside of this out. I'll just read the chat while I'm just doing this. Yeah, ZX uh, Renew, spray WD-40 in it. Yeah, that's one common tip that I usually tell people to do, funnily enough. Uh, it's got a little bit in there, but there's something, a little bit of solder or something somewhere just shamming it up. Just give me a sec. Try again. Uh, we'll just get the WD40 as well, I think. I mean, one downside to sticking a bit of WD40 in there is uh, it can actually help uh, stick solder to the inside of it. You know, I mean, it kind of collects it, but see, it's just jamming. It's not. What is going on? Yeah, that's it, I think. Nope. <laughs> Might just go and get another pump, actually. I think it's finally died. Why it chose today to die? I don't know. So it's working there. Yeah, someone said dry lube might be better. Yeah, I think you might be right. I think I know what it is. It's because I had that blooming awful solder up at the other day. You know that uh, gallium-based thing or whatever it was, uh, bismuth, that bismuth solder. Now it's not firing again.
Do you know what? I'm just going to get the desolder station on, I think. Oh, that's it. I'm not messing with that anymore. Let's just get the desolder station on. You know what? You wouldn't believe me, but I've never had a problem with that pump. You might do that once and then you clean it up and then it's fine. But today, no. Not a chance. Now today it's going to be uh, not working. So it might be a bit noisy, this fan. Let's just see. Knocking everything over it. So, over there. Over there. It's not plugged in, not hot air. So you know what's coming next? The desolder station is going to block next, isn't it? I can see it. I can see it coming a mile away. Yeah, curse of the live stream. I know, I'm gutted because the other thing is, I've had this. I've had this for about 30 years. So, out of 30 years, now it decides to die on a live stream, does it? While I'm waiting for the uh, this old station to heat up, I'm just going to just clean this again, just in case we can somehow get it back working again. Nope, it's still jamming. It's like it works every single time and it's not not needed. And then as soon as you need it, see if it does it now. Look, it doesn't work. It's like what what's that about? That's just crazy. That's just crazy. I must have fired it then about six times and it was working and then stick it over a pin? Nah. Again. Um, yeah, look, so we can every time now. Every time, let's try it again. Hang on. Look! <laughs> what? How's that? That's not possible. That's impossible. How, how does it know? How does it know that I'm sticking it over a pin? It must be the f heat of the fumes or something going over it, causing something somewhere to be not loose enough. I don't know. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. This this tip here, this tip size here is a bit big for this as well. That's the other reason I was trying to avoid doing this. I could change it, but it's, yeah, it's all the rigmarole of doing it. Anyway, let's hope this isn't blocked now. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be at the moment. Set a bit high, that 480. Let's just pull that down. Going for 4.30. The cleaning pin in the solder socket is slightly bent. Yeah, the pin at the bottom, it could be. It could be. Hmm. Anyway, let's let's uh, see how we get on with this. I mean, if it's, all this fails, I could just go to hot, uh, hot air. Yeah, you see, it's not pulling the solder away there. The one thing I do like about that uh, desolder pump is, as long as I get the temperature right, I will always get the solder off. Now, part of the problem is the, the, the nozzle. If I get a smaller nozzle on here, I'll have more success, but... Yeah, the solder's not coming away. Might need to go a bit higher temperature. I'll leave it longer. Ah, that one's freed up. Ah, let's just give it a go. Because it's still warming up. That's one of the things with these uh, Atens. Uh, sorry, not Atens, Anesty. You know, it's a D915 or another clone that's similar. You do have to uh, let them warm up. That's a power rail, that. That's not melting. Well, maybe it is now. No, it's not coming off that, look. That's going to need uh, more power. It's going to need higher temperature. One more time. No. Nope. Right, let me just go back to one or two of these that weren't freeing up. We don't lose any pads doing this. Yeah, that one's freed up now. That 
that one still isn't. Still not. Oh. Nope. Hang on, it's blocked already. There we go. I told you. I knew it would block. I wondered how long it would be. Let me find my super fine unblocking uh, thing. Hang on. I'm sure it's gone now. It should be on top of the station here. Where's it gone? Huh? Should have three cleaning tools here, and I only have, seem to have two. The, the one I need isn't there. I wonder if one of the cats has nicked it. Oh. It's not there, is it? Do you know, I'm absolutely jinxed today. Oh, there it is, I see it. I see where it's gone. It's gone down there. Yeah, I'm absolutely jinxed. It's like, it's like ironic, isn't it? The one cleaning tool I need isn't there. The solder pump's blocked up mysteriously for the first time in 30 years. And we've already got a blockage on the, uh, the solder station as well. Oh, well, this might give me an opportunity to show you what I don't like about this this older station. Yeah, it's blocked. You can see. I've got the cleaning <coughs> tool in here. Can't go any further than that. You can just about see it's sort of chipping out solder into the thing there. Oh, God. Anyway, let's just uh, pull that up there a minute. Ooh, do I need to switch it off? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah, what I tend to do with this when this blocks up now is to unclip it. There. Try and pull this thing out without burning myself. There we go. Oh. And where's that thing on now? I'll stick the cleaning tool back in. I guess this is useful. There's lots of ways of doing this. I think the way uh, a few people suggested to unblock it. Is that the right cleaning tool now? Is that the one I was using? Yeah. Uh, the way a lot of people uh, do this is just by leaving the thing sort of facing upwards. Oh, there you go, it's unblocked it. Just as a result of doing that, it's unblocked it. But what you can do is just, touch, if there's a blob of solder there, which is frequently what happens, touch it with a soldering iron, and then it, uh, it frees up. You can push the tool at the same time, you know, to free it up. So, now we've done that, let me stick all this stuff back in here now. Gotta watch the phone doesn't fall onto this while I'm doing it. That's for sure. There we go. Right, take two. Let's just see what the chat says. I use a heat gun. Yeah, I might end up using the hot air. Yeah, I don't know. Let's just see. You shouldn't really need to use it, but when you have all sorts of fun and games like this, there'll come a point where I just get so cheesed off with it <sighs> that I'll uh, want to just use hot air. It's literally hardly any time at all. So it's just the solder is just not coming off there. Yeah, that pin's all right now. Let's give it a lo bit longer. That one's all right now. And of course, we can, oh, filled it again. We could go uh, higher temperature, but then it's just about risk of pad damage. If we can do that one, that's that side pretty much done, I think. This pin over here needs more work, though. Yeah, there we go, that's that side done. So here we go, we're rocketing along now. Zooming along. So expect to block at any moment. That needs more time. all right that one's all right 
If you give them sufficient time, and you can actually wobble it a bit, and you can feel whether the pin is actually free, then it's not so hard. I get lazy, this is the thing, this is why a lot of the time I would just go straight to this with hot air. I've just filled that one again, look. The problem with using uh, such a large tip. Anyway, we're nearly there, that ship's nearly off. Two more pins to go, and then this one from uh, the one down here, which is going to be difficult, I think. It's going to be more heat. That one's not quite blocked, and I've just refilled it. Yeah, there we go. Let's just give this uh, corner one here a go, because this uh, still had a fair bit of solder. I think this is one of the uh, power rails going to this one. Or the ground. Not sure which. Yeah, you see, that's just not freeing up. Not freeing up. Might be able to use the, uh, the solder pump for that one, if it'll somehow miraculously work long enough. It's blocked again. Do you know what? I think I'm just going to put the plumbing hot air on. Oh, today is not going as planned. It should be simple stuff. There you go, some blocks again. The salt is it seem to be just collecting at the end there, doesn't it? I could go higher temperature for this one pin. That's the other possibility. Let's uh, just increase it a little bit. It'll take a minute to get up to the right temperature, but. <coughs> Locked again. You can see now why I gave this a bit of a hard time when I was uh, reviewing it. Well, I think I did. I don't know. I kept saying, no, it's, it's awful. Oh, it's good. No, it's awful. Oh, it's all right. And I think I ended up by saying, yeah, it's not bad. And it isn't bad, but I'll tell you what, it doesn't have block sometimes. Sometimes I keep it for weeks on end and never blocks once. It's blocked again. Right, I'm going to use hot air. There we go. Anyway, you get, you get the best of both worlds here, don't you? You get me to see, see me do it three different ways. Hopefully it won't fail the third way. Look, this is working again now. Now I'm not using it, it's working. Let's try it again on that one pen. Just testing it. It's working, right, okay. Ah, it worked. And see that? Pulled the solder straight off. I'm going to give it one more go for good measure, but that completely unblocked block that first pass. You can see now why I prefer to just use it like the Heiko. And, and, and again, and the desolder pump. They just get so, so much less hassle. Yeah. There we go. Right. Oh, I can't believe how long that's took to do. Um, where's those little pliers gone now? Here they are. So, let's just... Um, I should inspect that a bit closely, but I think I think it's okay. I can see it looks free from here. We'll check the top side in a sec. Yeah, it's not as free as it should be, though. Let's have a look on the other side. Yeah, let me show you. Can you see, sometimes you get little blobs of solder like this that come up, you know. Um, so whilst we've got a number of pins, they're sort of free. Uh, and this side doesn't look too bad. I think you can see that. Doesn't look too bad. We've still got the odd bit there. Let me see get rid of that bit. So it's like the top two right pins. Uh, well, not both of them. One of them is the, the one that we definitely unblock there. Let's just do the one next to it and see if uh, that makes any difference. Uh, I might just add a shoulder. See if that's made any difference whatsoever. No, it hasn't. Anyway, let's just see if uh, those pins are free at all. They don't feel very free to me. What I was taught to do when I was back in the trade is to push into them with the screwdriver here 
But you know what, if you do that, you just get big dints into the pins all the way around. You know what, both of these might may not be faulty, um, but you can, you know, just do that. You can just literally put a bit of pressure on there like that. That one looks like it's got some solder on it. And that one looks like it's got some solder on it as well. Just remove that transistor a little bit. So what's that one? It's the second one. Second one from the left and the third from the right. I'm just going to give those another go. Second one from the left. So that's, that's this one. Oh, stuck in working again. And third from the right. Yeah, I could see quite a lot of solder come out of there then. Yeah, I don't know you can see that from there, but uh, yeah, right down here, the uh, see if I can put the board in like that. Yeah, it doesn't look bad that uh, top side there. It's uh, just that bottom side because we've still got that little blob there. Um, where is it now? There. But I don't think that's on the pad, so it might be a bit better. Let's just see if we can free that up any further. Sorry, it's not very exciting, this isn't. It? I'm making a mountain out of a molehill here. This is something that should take a minute, and it's uh, it's incredible how long we've been going for. Hmm. Right, I'm going to use hot air to free that up. Right, let me catch up with the comments. Well, I'm not going to be able to catch up with the comments. There's so many blooming comments. If I've missed something important, now's the time to send it. I'll uh, see if I can answer. Dave Crunch, just repeat in case you missed it. I would recommend standing the board vertically uh, and the gun horizontally, and you're not fighting against gravity. But yeah, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. I used to do that sort of thing when I had more space, but. Uh, I have to admit, I've got into a bad routine of just doing it this way in the past, you know, in the recent past. Uh, it may be a stupid thing to ask, but have you tested plus 12, minus 12 voltages present? Uh, no, um, that is a good point. But where would that voltage have gone? <laughs> That's the thing, you know, this board, if I look at it, it's pristine. Um, I mean, in theory, the yeah, in theory, you've got a valid point because in theory, maybe something went wrong, wrong with a choke here. You might just be missing it, and then you might have a serial problem. But um, I think not because some of the pins are all right here, aren't they? That's the thing. It's going. Some pins are green, but the majority of them are red. Um, so uh, yeah, I think we're here. I do think we are here because we've provided the CIAs. I know the CIAs are okay. I've got nothing better to do today anyway, so even if we have to go backwards and forwards a bit and then discover um, if something with the voltages, you know, we've not really lost anything. So uh, anyway, let's uh, let's just get that off. So think about this. Get some stick under there. So there's two things I'm concerned about uh, cooking there. And one of them is the floppy drive power connector. The other thing to consider as well, the 12, I think we've got it, because I don't think that drive would work without it, actually. We've got plus 12 and 5 volts go to that drive. In theory, the minus 12 could be missing, but... I think they're only supply... Well, these do actually use some of those rails, don't they? So, yeah, it could be. If we're missing one voltage, it could be. Um, anyway, let's... Uh, it's this bottom one, isn't it? So let's just get a bit of caps and tape around that. There, like that. Bit of cat tape around here. I mean, at least this way you get to see the best of both worlds. 
normally I wouldn't have had this many problems. I wouldn't have had the blockages there in the dissolved station. This thing, this never blocks. I use it all the blooming time. It never blocks like it's, it's just a curse, isn't it? It's just a curse of doing a live stream, I think. Um, but you get to now see, you know, how I perhaps uh, do this with hot air. So let's wait for the hot air to warm up a little bit. Um, the main thing is I would still, even if I was using hot air, I always still remove the solder like I've done there to get it to a point where you've removed as much of the solder as possible because then it frees up really easily. It becomes a, a minor task to free it up with hot air rather than a let's try and get all of the solder on all the points up to temperature. Does that make sense? Because the majority of those pins there are actually okay. The majority of them are already ready to come off. You know, this side here, I don't think you can see that. It's totally, totally, totally free. Look at um, that side of the chair. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. It looks, looks free. It looks like it should come off. Um, so, can you see that? Yeah, I think you can. Um, oh, it's annoying. There's so many things in the way here. There's transistors. Anyway, let's just heat this side a little bit. Heat that side a bit. And the wider area a little bit. Focusing specifically here on the pins where I know they can see some, uh, you know, solder, solder that needs to come off. There's another reason for me wanting to socket this up as well, because as I said, I've got a load, I think I have, some 1488s and 1489s, and you know what, I'd like to test them all. I'd like to take this opportunity to get both of these socketed up. There you go, it's, look, it's coming off already. It's, it's free, there's hardly anything holding it, look. I just get that, look. Grab it with my hand, ow. So there we go. But the advantage in doing that, we risk no, you know, there's no risk to damaging the pads there. That looks a bit dirty, that bottom corner. There's nothing There's nothing off or pulled away or anything like that. Uh, and we're okay there as well. You can see using the nozzle there, that, that that's, ow, that's a supply uh, pin, that top one there, which you know some of the solder masks come away. That's one reason I try and avoid using my solder station. But again, if I wasn't lazy and went and got a small nozzle on it, it would be all right. It would be, get, get better position um, and you wouldn't get as much solder mask removed like that when you sort of thing. Um, right, so how many pins is that? 14 we say. Let's just see if I've got 14 pin sockets here. I think I might have some sockets uh, here. And some more sockets here. I'm not sure which one's which here now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's 16 pins, isn't it? There's this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That one's 14 pin. So let's... Uh, Get one of these out. ZX Kim, Chris, you are not alone, mate. Thank you. Just thanks for being so patient. Um, I'm hoping this is the sort of thing that you guys can just be listening to or watching when you're doing something else, so that you're not completely bored out your mind watching what I'm doing. <laughs> it's not very exciting. Uh, right, so let's just flip the board over. I think what I'll do is, I'm just going to carefully just clean this before we get the socket on there. Nearly out of cotton buds actually, I've got a load upstairs, I'll have to raid upstairs at some point, perhaps before I do any more videos here, um, to get my cotton bud supply back up. I mean, technically, I don't, don't need to clean that because it's, it's, it's really clean, this board. Super clean. But sometimes you do get a bit of dirt and stuff under there, you know what, so why not take advantage while we're in that position? Uh, where's the fiberglass pen gone there? There it is. I'm just going to uh, clean up 
that uh, one pad there you can see it's, and there's no damage to it, it just doesn't look very clean. Uh, and there's no uh, nothing lost by just giving a quick wipe over them anyway. Uh, what's that cotton bud? It just means the solder is going to flow really nicely on there when you uh, get the socket on. And obviously inspect for damage. I'll just do that. Hang on. Yeah, it's as good as new that. There's nothing uh, needs doing to that. So let's get the socket on there. Uh, now they could, we could, before we solder that on, we could remove that. Let's do that, actually. Let's do that. Let's just do that. There's a wood louse there, and you can see it. Anyway, I'll let it go about its business. It's not interfering, is it? Um, yeah, let's, let me just try with the... Now we've got the hot air out, we'll try just removing the solder with this thing, because it seems to be working, doesn't it? And we seem to get some success with it. And then it might just speed the process up a little bit. In theory, this is the sort of thing that if I wasn't filming it and everything was working as it should be, it's uh, a really short job. It's like, you know, a minute or two to... Now the solder now it's, Solder's tied itself in a knot, but it's the sort of thing that um, takes about 10 minutes in total to do, but anyway, we've turned it into half an hour so far, haven't we? Or I have. There you go. Uh, and you can see the solder's come away really well there, but it also, it's not that important to get rid of all of it, it's just get rid of as much as you can, and then the hot air. Just freeze it up easily. There you go, see three so far. The other thing, the irony is, this might actually be in a position to just come off after I've successfully sucked the solder over this. I think it's starting to jam again. It's got that feeling to it. It's no surprise though, as I said, it's about that 25 years or so, this, or longer. It's one side done just about. Last pin on the side. This is what should have been at the start. This is what should have happened at the start. Hang on, it's jamming up again. I think I blame that chip quick uh, solder, actually. That's probably what's done it. Because all you need is a few particles in there. That you've not cleaned out. You see, this is coming out fine now. Like the longer I go at this, the better this is getting. Oh, hang on, now it's jammed. It's like probably a massive piece of solder somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Just a few pins left. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. <sighs> jammed again. And it's jammed again. Oh, <laughs> just like it's lost pin. Blooming thing. Yeah, there is a lot of solder in there. I can see it coming out. Right, let's try that again. Nephus, did you forget to put your watch forward? Yeah, I keep looking at this going, uh, oh, it's like, it's only two o'clock. It's only quarter past two. No, it's not. Right, let's try that last pin. Yeah, this is that. Uh, power rail, isn't it? Yeah, it's the same as the other pin, not on the other chip. It's absorbing tons and tons and tons of heat. The reason is there's a massive trace here. Well, you can see it, a massive trace that goes all the way up there. And it's going to be the same on the other side of the board. Because it's a main supply rail, or other ground. There we go, freed up. Let's just redo that one. That's it, it's all removed. Yeah, nine times out of ten, when you just do this here, you can find it just comes off. It really does depend on whether you've managed to get all of the solder from both sides. Let's have a look over that other side. Yeah, there's little bits of solder still there on that side. Again, it's looking really free on one side. But you know what, for the time it's going to take, I'm just going to use hot air. Why, why even risk trying to struggle and wobble it around and all the rest of it? I see no point in that. 
Um, none whatsoever. So let's just try and rotate it there. Can you see it? Yep, I think you can. So same sort of thing, just preheat it a bit. I taped this cap here because you just don't want it drying out as a result of putting a bit of hot, hot air on here. Or the can melting. You know, it's got a plastic uh, thing around it, hasn't it? Sure, it move already then, I'm sure. Not quite there, we've got one or two pins here that is that again supply rail. It needs a bit more time, I think, that one. That corner. Sorry, I'm uh, missing all your comments. I'll uh, uh, catch up. Oh, I can't grip it. I cannot grip it. It's because I've got resistors on one side there. That's the problem. I can't get, you know, anything. I mean, I could sort of technically slide under there a bit, but it might be easier just to use my little uh, pointy tool here sometimes that much help us get a little bit of leverage under there right it should be off by now I'm getting a bit concerned we've got playing too much there we go too much heat I'm going to go this one side out, just uh, try and grab it like that. Going at a weird angle, come on. There we are. So again, no damage. We might just need to unblock the odd hole there. Uh, can you see? Yeah, no damage, no lost pads or no board or anything like that. So uh, let me just move that one out of the way. Forgot which one's which now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? You take two chips off like that, you're like, which one Which one was the 1488 and which one was the 1489? Anyway, we can find that out in a minute. So uh, sockets, let me get the socket on. I believe it's killed for a minute. I'll catch it with comments. We'll quickly stick these on and go and retest it with some new chips. So, uh, Stuart Kinner, it's Friday apparently. Yeah, I know. Apparently. Now, this is the thing. I keep looking at the. I have to keep looking at my uh, phone to work out what day it is. It's, uh, it's really strange. It's BSD Chris, your watch is out. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Big Ted. Nice to see you here. Uh, Nigel Rhodes, I've taken my time when I got my boards. Well, this is the thing, yeah. I mean, you've seen. We've taken our time with that. We haven't rushed through it, but things just didn't go according to plan. Thank you very much for that donation, Sean. Um, I'm not sure if I missed any others. I'm just. I'm going to quick read back, scan and see if there's anything I can, uh, any questions or anything there. Hello, Mr. Woodhouse, uh, Woodlouse, rather. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see Kim taking the make now. Hello, Mr. Woodlouse. I thought we had a Mr. Woodlouse join the stream for a minute. Uh, FPF Ops, if you shout me out, I'll ask my crush out tomorrow. Well, there you go, it's a shout out. Shout out to FPF Ops, FPS Ops. Yeah. Ask your uh, girlfriend out. Oh, where's my thing on there? Uh, with any with on signs of getting back to normality, it's gadget day. Hi, Sean Connolly. Yep, it's uh, gadget day. 
we've just had uh, a rather embarrassing uh, chip removal. It's taken, I don't know, about three days. <laughs> I could have built an entire Amiga 500 motherboard in that time, I think. Um, so anyway, we've we've done this. Let's just do quickly the same thing I just did over there. Where's the? Uh, that gone. It's cold that area now. Well, it's lukewarm. It's just a light white like that. Not a lot. And just uh, wipe it down. So uh, I'm just going to flip it over. Let's just work out. Now what you can do is uh, I'll show you if you can. Hold on. Hold the board up to the light and. Uh, see which pins that you can tell there because of the contrast yeah there are some of them blocked but yeah work out which which ones uh, need unblocking and some of them do but they all look all right from that side that's really weird yeah there's a couple on the bottom right a couple bottom right there. those two there just need unblocking so i'll just heat them and uh, hopefully unblock them yeah, that's locking unblocked. Now that's locking unblocked. Uh, because we've been using the dissolved pump, it's going to have a wipe over there like that as well. And clean the board off as a whole later. Uh, let's get the sockets on. So I've got the pin one marking to the right hand side there. Should expect the pins on my socket. It's always a good idea. You never know, you can have, I've, I've had it before where you put a socket on, you think everything's all right, you solder a couple of pins and you start solving all the others. And you get three quarters of a long whole row, and then you go, hang on a minute, there's no pin there. Why is there no pin? And then you realise the socket just happened to have one pin with the ends chipped off or something, and you never checked it. So, uh, yeah, it's always a good idea to make sure they're all uh, in there, all the pins are there. So, solder corn points. And I'm just going to inspect it from the other side to make sure it's as straight as possible. Uh, yeah, I think that's all right. I think. Yeah, it's as near as uh, darn it. Uh, where's that other socket gone now? There should be another socket somewhere here. There it is. Again, just uh, check. The pins are all all right, and they are. We've got a pin blocked there. That doesn't want to go on. Why does that want to go on? No, it's gone on. Flip it over. And the same thing again, I'm holding it from the other side. I really should have pulled that thing off there because, uh, yeah, it just. It's not helping, is it? Solder that pin. Solder that pin. The reason I'm doing sticking both of them at the same time like this is so that I can look at them next to each other and go, are they straight? Yeah, I think that's not bad. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I've got them the right way and everything, so uh, let's just solder all the rest of the pins and then get the chips on and test it. I hope this fixes it. I hope it's not something to do with 12 volts or minus 12 volts. Anyway, as I say, it'll give me uh, the opportunity to test out all my other 1488s and 1489s. So, no big deal. It was a bit like that with that buster the other day. You know, we ended up swapping the buster, super buster socket. It wasn't the super buster, not swapping the socket, but fitting a socket. Um, but there was there's more mileage in, you know, just ruling the chip out. It means that uh, I can swap the busters around on those boards. It also means that, you know, because I'm going to have the Rev 9 buster and Stephen's going to have the, the Rev 11, I'll buy a Rev 11. They're expensive, though, as well. £50 Rev 11 Super Buster. Uh, it means I'll have both busters then, so that 
you've got the best of both worlds. You know, if I want to test things and test work out compatibilities between different things, I need a bit more on that solar point there. Uh, I can do that. I can put the Rev9 buster and I can test something. Someone may say, can you test such a thing to see if it works on a Rev9 buster? And I can do that. Although, to be fair, work, you know, normally you'd want to try and get a Rev11 buster if you can. Um, Super buster for one of those 4000s. Sorry, not very exciting, not very gripping this, is it? Gripping watching, not... I can't see what's going on there, is that pin gone weird or...? No. Just looked weird. The pan's alright. There we go. So, I mean, typically, I'd normally inspect this under magnification and bob into them like this. And you can see whether they're all sort of equal sizes. Uh, but I can do that sort of thing later. It's not that important for what we're doing here. What I'll do. Let's just have a look. Yeah, you can see that. That's all right. There's lots of flux around there. So we've got our two sockets. Uh, let's uh, now get the chips back on. The mini ones, not the old ones. <laughs> the goats have arrived in Orlando from the Great Wall. Looks like Goat Simulator from the, the video footage. At the end of the stream, uh, Niga boots the yellow screen, Ganji awakes with a jolt, only to find the laughter. The last five days have been a dream. Oh, I'll tell you what, you better not have been. Right, let me get rid of all these things here. Get those sockets out of the way, don't need those now. Just back to there. Um, we'll clean up in a minute. Let's just get the chips on, I think. So I've got the old ones there. Let's uh, stick those there out of the way. Um, yeah, in here we've got these ones. So let me just have a look at Amiga PC Explorer. I'll show you why. Well, I know I can't actually. I can't do that, can I? Uh, yeah, I was going to use that for the CD32. There's no Rev6 board on here, is there? Let us have a look. Uh, A500 Rev 6 photo. Big book of hardware. That will do it. Yeah, so you can't really see. See what I'm doing there, can you? Big book of Amiga hardware. Hopefully, there'll be some Rev 6 motherboard photos here. Yeah, hi res. Uh, Rev 6A motherboard. Let's click on that. Just because, like I say, I was a bit of a moron and uh, forgot which chip was which. So, the one at the bottom there is the 88, is it? Yeah, and that one's the 89. So, the one uh, nearest the port is the 89. Yeah, thank goodness for websites like that. So, 1489 nearest the edge. Uh, which one's that on here? Yeah, so the top one here is the 1489, so this one. Uh, it's always worth checking it's not gullwing, you know, the pins can be sort of spread out like that instead of like that on a new chip. So 14, 18, on the end. Where's the pin one marking? It's on this side here, isn't it? Oop. Oh. Total failing to put this in, aren't I? I'm trying to straighten those pins now. Yeah, there we go. Right, so pin one on this side, nearest the port. That's one, and the 88 is the other one. There we go. Let's uh, just pull these bits of caps and tape off as well now. Well, I'm totally stuck that round there, didn't I? That's it. around there as well. Right, uh, let's wheel over the other side of the room, I think, and see see what happens. You can, you can see what's coming, can't you? It's going to go same errors on the same connections. But let's see. Let's 
so I'll keep the video. This video, mouse. We'll connect audio anyway. We didn't test that last time, did we? And again, we just need to just uh, have a look at these here. I think what I would have done is cut off these wires that aren't doing anything. They're just not connected to anything. Just cut them all off. Yeah, connection there's a bit loose. Uh, where's that one going? Yeah, that's those three. Yeah, that's all right. So let's uh, connect the power up, I think. Just checking everything, switch it on. Just making sure it boots and it does, it's okay. So I switch it off, connect the floppy drive up again. If you can find the thing, where's it gone? So floppy drive. There, connection, power connection. Just put the drive there. Point you with the screen. I can. Yeah, I'm worried about camera falling, falling over. It's kind of like a bit top heavy. It's not really the right kind of tripod for this sort of thing. It's just a spare one my wife had. Uh, so, what are we going to do? Serial. Hey! Look at that. Yeah, so these are the pins here. Well, that's it, isn't it? It's just giving us a bill of good health. We've solved it. <laughs> it really was that simple. <laughs> there's nothing else to it. Because these are the pins. You can see there's no loop backs. If you look at two to three, they're joined. Four, five, and six are joined. 8, 20, and 22 are joined there. Um, so, and if you look at the things at the bottom here, it tells you what they are. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 20, 22. Quite why that little thing keeps spinning, I don't know. Yeah, what's your take on that? I'll have a look at the comments in a minute, but my take on that is we fixed it. It was literally just one of those. Which is what, what I expected. You know, if the board looks all right, and you know the CIAs aren't the issue, um, what else it going to be? It's got to be those chips. It can't be anything else. You could say, yeah, maybe voltages, but I suspected not, because, well, I don't think the floppy drive would have booted without the plus 12. Uh, it could have been, though. It's always a good idea to check voltages and things. If we just go back, let's just test the audio. Yeah, I'll turn that up. It's a bit quiet. But you can hear that's working. So, all done. Just to test the filter. Yeah, I'm not sure you can hear that. Turn that up. That's one thing I like about this sys test. Can you hear how high frequency that is? Testing that filter is really easy in the sys test. There's one thing that Diagram needs. It's got the capability to test the filter there in Diagram, but it hasn't got that test. 10 kilohertz square wave because the difference is very noticeable. Ow, it's making me ears pierce that. I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up. Anyway, let's, uh, I guess, what can we do now? Uh, mm, wheel across the other side of the room, I think, and just uh, take stock of where we're at. I mean, we take the board back over there, I guess. I'll point it back down because we can clean up the uh, the points underneath. But I mean, as far as uh, that one's done. Um, it really was <laughs> that simple. I won't bore you with testing my own chips, I'll do that off camera. And of course, the other thing we could do, but uh, yeah, I can't be bothered just at this point in time, I don't think, unless this uh, unless people really want to. I could put those other chips back in and we can work out which one of them is the one that's faulty. Uh, because the chances are it's only going to be one side, it might be like the transmit, you know, the transmitter side rather than the receiver. Um, anyway, let's, let's go back over there. Anyway, I hope you found that fairly interesting. I think it's a little bit long-winded. It, it's took us an incredible amount of time to swap two chips, hasn't it? <laughs> I 
Ouch, headphone wearing. Sorry about that. <laughs> Your dog can hear it. <laughs> Is Buster there? We had we had a dog called Buster the other day, didn't we? Hopefully he can hear it. Uh, yes, we can hear that. Which one was it? Was it both of them? Uh, I'll tell you what. We we, we try that. Let's uh, let's just try and clean the bits of solder off these legs, maybe. We'll clean up, uh, we'll clean up this first, and then we'll clean up the solder on those legs, and we'll, we'll try that. It might just extend things out for a bit, because I haven't really got anything else to show you right now, and I don't want to start recapping that CD32 at this point. Um, I would have preferred to you know, start that a bit earlier, really, because I think even, even if I'd done the CD32 within this video, it would have been a two-part thing. It would have been like, get all the caps off, start putting some of them on, and then I probably would have had to have a break at some point. The other thing I'm tempted to do, but I'll, I'll do it off camera, is clean up this area down here the same way. Because there's that much uh, solder and flux and stuff there. But I think that's from manufacture, actually. So, I mean, one more thing to point out with re in relation to these ports, as I uh, uh, sort of mentioned. You've got some supply voltages there. Now, that test we've just done, I don't think is, uh, you know, it's not checking anything to do with those. So you may want to measure those one or two pins as well, you know, plus 12, uh, and I think that's say minus 12, just to see if those voltages are there. Because if you've got a specific serial device that, you know, works with the Amiga, then it may, it may need those voltages. Um, it's a bit different if you're just connecting, say, an Amiga to Amiga to play a game that's got a link, you know, serial link up for example with those you tend to just find you can link pins two and three you know two from this side to three to the other and swap them you know vice versa and the two machines are linked up you don't typically need any of the cables um i'd, I'd link a ground up uh, just to be uh, on the safe side um but those voltages the, yeah there's not very much needs them but modems and things like that that may well do scanners and things I, I don't know they may well you might get a serial scanner i think those sort of things are usually parallel actually because you get that much data, serial's really not up to the job. Yeah, that's looking all right to get a toothbrush and uh, give it a brush. <laughs> Happy coding, damn, I thought it was my tinnitus kicking in. <laughs> Sounds are far a lot sound. Yeah, get your ears tested, mate, I think. Um, diagram is really meant to be used when your machine can't boot to assist test. Yes, that's right. I'm not criticising the diagram at all in any way, shape or form. Um, when I was talking about the, unless that's something somebody asked, um, it, I was uh, referring to just that uh, filter thing. Chucky added a 10 kilohertz uh, thing in there, just like, because um, I don't think it goes up to 10 kilohertz, then it, you can hear the difference with a 10 kilohertz, uh, was it a square wave, I think it might be. You can audibly hear the difference quite noticeably on the filter you know the cuts off there works really well at that frequency it's either it's you know there's no sound or this tinnitus sort of high frequency sound it's um, amazing the difference it makes but i think um and i started to talk about this the other day diagram is amazing it really is the work that's gone into to that really it just makes diagnosing some of these sort of things uh, much much easier uh, where's my toothbrush? So I'm just going to tilt the board this way a little bit. Let's just move these. I'm getting right mess here. This is, I have a, a tendency when I'm doing these streams to start getting in a mess with stuff everywhere. Look, I've got the crusty bits of uh, paper towel there with bits of solder on it. And if I'm honest, I'd, I'll clean this board up quite a bit off stream, off you know, off, uh, video. Because there's just so much, uh, getting hairs looking here, but there's just so much dirt on here. Can you see this? This is really dirty. And certainly this bit. But anyway, that'll do. I'll use this big, bigger brush. Yeah, can you see the hairs on that? Got some hairs on there. So I'll spend some time uh, later cleaning that up, but. Yeah, the little bit we've worked on there, that don't look bad actually. I think there's a hair there, look. It's still there, uh, it's hanging on for its life, there we are. Yeah, so you can see the bit we've done here, yeah, it's not so bad. 
the solder's perhaps not equal in size, there's a hair there, I can see. But that's okay, that's all right. Uh, so let's see if we can clean the solder off those uh, chips. Move that out of the way. I guess I'm going to have to use these blooming things again. Helping hands here. Where's the thing gone? Clip. Have we lost an arm off that? I'm sure I've lost an arm since I did the last stream. It had a thing on here, didn't it? Where's it gone? Anyway, let's use that one. Oh, it's not the right way around now, is it? Oh, no, there, there it is. I'm just imagining things. I just want it so I can get side on. That one's better, actually. Yeah, it won't take a minute, this. Going to log off now. Nice six gadget. Catch you later. Thanks very much. Thanks for stopping. Yeah, I'm not sure you can see what I'm doing. But you can. Those pins need a bit of straightening. They're all over the blooming place. Uh, I'll show you the tips of them in a minute. You can see they're kind of like bent that way, which is not a direction you'd expect. Uh, I think they just bent them when they were putting them in the board there in the factory just to hold them in place before they went through a wave machine or something like that, probably. Uh, I mean, technically, you should try and do the insides of these as well, but we'll be all right, I think. Just do one side. And in case you're wondering why I'm doing this, is because if you don't get rid of these bits of solder, they stick into the socket, and before you know it, when you remove them, you damage your socket. Have a look at that one. Yeah, can you see? One or two, uh, sorry, a bit close there, aren't I? One or two of the pins, this little bit sort of pointing one way or the other, that one's pointing upwards, look. Anyway, we'll straighten those out with the pliers. So we'll do that top one. That one there is a little bit crimped, and that one is as well, it's pointing upwards a little bit. And that bottom one. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, look at this one, we've got a cra <laughs> crazy uh, leg bent there. I don't know what's going on outside, it sounds like there's either roadworks going on. Or somebody's building a house. I can hear like cutting things and road drills and I don't know. Something out there. So much for lockdown. Same with the cars. Hey, car, 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 car. Considering there's a lockdown, there's an awful lot of traffic on the roads for this uh, day of the week. Anyway, there we go. I did the same with the other one. Let's have a look back at the comments again. World Talent, hey, nice to see you again. looking at the comments here. I think we've lost everybody. It says one watching. Is that right? Have we got one watching? We must have more than one watching. Unless it's just me that's watching. <laughs> Everybody's gone. It was like, well, that was interesting. All right, I'm off my tea. I'm not hanging around for testing these old chips. Um, what do the other one? Right, so the other one's there. Yeah, right, let's uh, just do the same with this one. Try and do this a bit quicker if we can. Oh, bottom's fallen off, look. Oh. 
Are you sure we're not all <laughs> extremely well written bots? <laughs> uh, it's, it's funny. I, you know, sometimes wonder about things like that, don't you? You wonder, is that falling off again? That's one falling off again. You wonder, is life real? Are we all really here? Or is it a simulation? Am I a computer program? And I don't even know it. I don't really need to spend much time on these. There's very little in the way of soldering on them anyway, but it's not going to do any harm. Just give them a quick pass. That's all right. Let's do the other side. What's going to happen? That's going to fall off again now, isn't it? All right. Yeah, so what's your best? Do you reckon one of these chips is faulty and one of them isn't? I think so. I think it, it can't transmit. I think the receiving side is going to be all right because I think the current, you know, if you think about it, the transmission part is where it's generating the current, you know, changing it from voltage to current. Um, and then again, the receiver part is high sensitive, isn't it? The receiver part, if you're not aware, you know, to deal with that attenuation, like I say, those volt the voltage is turned into, uh, or voltage changes, changed into current changes. And you've got, um, what's the word? Um, a, low, a very uh, low threshold and uh, high gain. So, I don't know, in theory, it could, be, could have a fault at either end, but I'm thinking the transmitter. I'm not sure which one's which until we uh, check that, which one's the transmitter part. We can find that easily on Google in a minute. But I reckon the transmitter part is the issue. I think the receiver's going to be all right. But it could be total opposite. And of course, both could be faulty. Uh, that's the other thing. Might have uh, a few pins damaged on one and then on a few damaged on the other. But I think the chances of them both being faulty Entire, you know, exact. Uh, it's slim, I think. I think it's only going to be one. Straight the other side, and then we're going to try it. I'll just look it up on Google before we go, unless someone else can do that now for me. So we can work out which one's the. Aren't 1488 uh, current limited? Um, yeah, they probably are, but. It's just the fact that one of them, like say, is generating current, and the other one's sensing it, isn't it? So it's a question of which, where would the fault, where would you like, most likely have a fault if you've got shorts and things. I'm thinking the transmitter is the thing that's going to fail more likely than the receiver, but it could be the other way around. Because we don't really know what went wrong to start with, do we? That's the other thing. So I'll just look at the comments and then we'll go over that. Right, let's uh, let's uh, go over there. So I'll get the board. Uh, what do I need? I need a screwdriver. So I've got a little screwdriver here. To Tom Mead for sending these uh, these for me to look at anyway. Um, if you're interested, we can uh, have a look at the CD32 tomorrow, perhaps. But maybe something different. I don't know. Maybe one of those spectrums because I've got a couple of spectrums there from my friend Andrew, and he's looking at at some point. They might both work. I don't know. They've just been in storage for forever. Uh, so we'll take out. Uh, let's take out that one. So that's the 1888, isn't it? So just carefully just get the screwdriver and can you, you can see what I'm doing, can't you? Yeah, I'm just checking. Push it down a bit again. Yeah, so we'll stick that on the power supply, it's uh, grounded. And we'll stick the 1488 in. Yeah, I'm just checking which one's the 1488. Yeah, so this one's the 1488. Pin one to the right here. Let me just double check that, make sure I did take out a 1488. Yeah, that's a 1488. Because I think we said 1489 was nearest the edge here, didn't we? So again, I'm just going to have to be just a bit careful and just make sure everything's okay there. There's. Uh, right. 
floppy drive. Where's that plastic thing gone near that I had? I don't know where it's gone. Ah, oh, there it is. Just to isolate that. Uh, switch it on. Hang on a minute. Yeah, obviously you've got power, didn't it? Switch it on. Point you. Got the screen there. So I'll just uh, turn you a little bit. Right, I'm just going to feel the tops of those. Actually, yeah, they're all right temperature-wise. Uh, so test the serum again. Yeah, look. So we've got some errors there, right? We've got the red boxes. So that 1488 is faulty. So I'll swap out the 1489. I may as well show you it while I'm doing it. Just in case it takes me a minute or two to do. I switch it off. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe what we're going to find here now, uh, obviously we obviously need to put the 1488 back in first, don't we? What we may find here now is that both of these have got faults. Hang on. Why can't I get onto the side of that? There we are. So that's that faulty one. Put the good one back in. Then one to the right. Take the 89 out. And again, I can't get under it. There it is. Right, so 1489 on the power supply and the old 1489 into the socket, pin one to the right. There we go. Let's, uh, let's try it again, switch it on. Of course, the other thing, we, <laughs> just, just a terrible thought. That terrible thought is, we may now find this one's faulty as well, and then we stick both the good chips back in, and they're both faulty. Because one of the other chips has killed the other chip. Does that make sense? Like, the 1488 could kill the 1489. I don't think so, but, yeah, it's just a thought. Yay! There we go. So we know it was the 1488. Um, my guess is that's the transmitter, but I could be wrong. Let me just bring the laptop over. Just leave that there a sec. And I'm just going to just do a search in Google uh, for Cam. I'm sure you guys might have already posted it, but I'd just like to know what that is. MC forty eighty. Uh, well, obviously it's a quad line driver. Uh, quad line driver is a companion circuit. Fourteen eighty nine the receiver. Yeah, the fourteen eighty nine is the receiver. So there you go. I was right. Fourteen eighty nine eighty eight is the transmitter. By the looks of things. So that's the bit that's like say you're doing your voltage to current conversion. So. It kind of stands to reason that if you get short somewhere in that, you know, the cable or something, something like that, it's probably going to be the bit that's driving the current, isn't it, rather than the receiver. But then again, like I say, you've got just as much chance of killing the 1489 depending on what goes on. You know, you get a spike of high voltage, some ESD or something going into the 1489. You've got just the same chance of uh, something like that dying, but anyway, it was a good guess really, more than anything. Oh, thanks for that PVC. 88 is the driver, 89 is the receiver. Uh, ESD spike, yeah, or common in carpet land. Yeah, that's true, you know, this thing, it probably is, that's what's killed them. Um, but it could be the cable. I, I, I do know we had a number of these come in, let's say, people put, used to plug PC, various PC devices into them, uh, and then come in when uh, they killed it, because the cable was totally different. It fed the 12 volts somewhere or something. It might just be that they burnt out the 12 volt resistor or something and needed a new resistor. I do remember that we swapped out a fair few of those uh, 1488, 1489s. Not, not as many on Amigas, but there were all other things like Spectrum, for example, I think it's got, I could be wrong, post below if you know otherwise, but I think the Spectrum's got a 1488 and a 1489 on there. And I think the Atari ST 
has as well. Um, they were just really common or very similar chips. I've seen similar chips on so many different systems. Because there are other ch chips that are interchangeable as well. They're not the exact same part number. The MC ones, is that Motorola? I think it is. Um, maybe it's not. I always thought MC was Motorola controllers or something MC. But there's, yeah, there's lots of those MC ones, but there's uh, other uh, manufacturers that do equivalent parts as well. And you see those on some of the other systems or some of the other boards. Um, Anyway, I think I'm uh, I'm going to tidy up now and get some uh, tea. That uh, seems to be working. Uh, so, have you got any questions or anything, guys, before I get off? Suggestions, perhaps, for another streaming of the day? Would you rather see something different other than the Mega uh, Spectrum or something? Or we've got a C64. Good look at that. Also, got a Toshiba laptop here, an old one. It might be, I think, a 286. I'll show you actually. You can just about see the the carry case there. It's really crusty look how dusty and dirty is on top why is it so let's just see if we can uh, let's just uh, have a quick look at the inside of the thing yeah look at that yellowed plastic t1200 why is it saying rotate device yeah my camera just went weird then for a minute um yeah, so I've got a PC there as well we can look at, or we can do some Archimedes stuff, because I've got a lot of those Archimedes boards to get on, on with, so I might, I might have to do that anyway, at some point over the next week or two, I'm going to have to focus on just uh, one of those boards on the mat and stripping it down, component, taking components off, taking them off, taking them off, and then start putting them back on when it's all cleaned up. Um, is he testing on, uh, hang on, CMOS chip on a carpet? Yeah, here we go. The CMOS police are here, the stat anti-static police are here. Yes, I am testing on the carpet. Get over it. It's like, yes, you know, I talk about these things all the time. There's a risk. Yeah, you can damage things with ESD, but um, I've never damaged anything uh, myself. I've talked about it before. It's like my skin resistance. I can't generate static. We can perhaps do some videos on that. I can't generate static if I tried. Um, well, I used to be able to 15 odd years ago. You should wear an ESD wrist strap and use a bench mat, but okay for what I'm doing anyway. Any questions or anything guys? Or anything I've missed? Thank you for the donations. I did see a few donation uh, things pop up earlier so very very much appreciate it. It means you can buy some flux and solar because after having done those four thousands I'm a bit short actually. Uh, I've got a few, two tubes left I think. I might have three. I don't know but we're gonna have two left probably tomorrow when I start moving on to some of the other things. Sorry you've got chin, chin cam there. Are you wearing nylon underpants? Uh, I'm commando. <laughs> Not really. Uh, wearing cotton-based clothing stops ESD. Um, yeah, I think probably most of what I wear is probably cotton. I don't know. Nikes and a really and a not, yeah a wally jumper. Yeah. Thanks, mate, for your time, Chris. Much appreciated, Kim. Kefers, no questions. Just hope you have a great rest of the day, mate. Thank you very much. I'm glad we managed to get that board working for Tom. Uh, I'll clean it up off camera and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do in another video. Thank you very much, guys. Stay safe. Thanks for joining the stream and thanks for everything. Thanks for all the donations and comments and suggestions. Sorry if I missed anything. I'll uh, pick up with you in the next stream. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.